Robert Price. I'm a teacher in the professional writing program. Okay. And I've been at Arendelle as a teacher for 12 years, but I did my undergrad back in 95. Okay. So I've been here for a long time. All right. So back in 95, when you were an undergrad, what were some of your financial concerns, if you had any? I was concerned about paying uh, tuition, um, my residence, and to do that without incurring debt. Okay. So I didn't want to incur debt because I know debt, uh, I just couldn't afford it. Were you good then at budgeting then? Are you really aware of that? And did you manage to... Um... I was pretty aware of it. My, um, I paid for school myself and uh, I, I have um, three younger brothers and an older brother and so my parents um, were a little stretched so I wanted to make sure that I could mm. pay for it as much as I could. So, um, so I was concerned about taking on debt and then being in a hole for the next year. So. So that was my concern of trying to stay level so I didn't have to ask for help okay. in case it wasn't there. Or I mean, it would be there, but it was saddling my parents. So I didn't and you, your actions kind of followed that kind of mindset? Yeah, so I, <clears throat> I worked at a pharmacy as often as I could, and I had a lot of help at the pharmacy where they would give me as many hours as I could take. And then I, I worked as a don on campus, which for two years gave me free board. Okay. And then I worked on campus at the student newspaper during the year, so I was I had an income through the school year in the summer, so I was able to uh, um, hit my goal of, of not incurring debt. That's amazing. So in, if you had to give a student some advice, because you, you went through it yourself, mm -hmm. and I think you're aptly in a good position to give them some advice as to what are like the top two or three things they should be doing now so that they don't incur debt. Well, to not incur debt is, is to not spend frivolously, which, you know, it's... it's it might seem simple to do, but it's not always so intuitive. It is, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I did spend money. I had fun. I mean, I have a friend who spent some of his OSAP on a pair of skis, which is probably not the smartest thing to do. Right. Because um, he's going to need the money later. Right. I had a friend who got himself into some trouble with, with debts, um, spending his money on the wrong things and then he started stealing money from somebody to try to pay off the bills. Wow. And, and those are not recommended practices. Those aren't recommended. No so recommended don't, practice. No. Don't, don't, do don't do that. that. That's what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, you get into desperation. And, and, right. Um, so I, I ended up finding a lot of work and taking jobs wherever I could and I position myself nicely. So yeah, first don't incur debt, don't spend wildly. Um, and I was pretty good at setting aside, like my priority was uh, tuition and, and then for three years um, doing my, uh, the residence. So I did, I did have a savings account where I dumped the money in there. Okay. And I just didn't touch it. It was actually in a different bank so I couldn't access it very okay. easily. So out of sight, out of mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I took five years to do my undergrad rather than four because okay. that spread out some of the right. costs, right. which was fine. That was better for me as a student, too. Okay. And when I did my, my master's and PhD, I didn't have funding, and, and I actually did those part-time and work, too. So I stretched out my whole education right. Right. to fit with the budget. Um, um, that you had to work with. So you made it work for you. I did, yeah. Between the timing and the spreading it out over a longer period of time, it made it small, biteable chunks that you could actually work with. Yeah, that's and right. And manage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good strategy. I think it was. And yeah. working as a Don was a, a great job. It was a hard job to get, but I was able to, to get it. And so that eliminated my, my residence for one year. Mm -hmm. And I banked some of that money for the, the next year. And, okay. Um, now, did my grades suffer? Probably a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I was working all the time, but that was, that was okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, those are, I think that's um, some invaluable kind of information for students, yeah? yeah? To understand that it's not just you. I think we all go through it at some point in time, and it's just the current situation of the economy and where we're at, this is what we have to do. Yeah. Whether I, it's a good or bad thing, it's a dip, you know something to discuss later on. I've had some students who they're trying to do six courses a semester 
because of the you know debt and tuition. Right. And I say why why, and then and then they have you know breakdowns. They can't do it or their their grades suffer. If you can stretch it out over right. five years, it doesn't matter when you're forty mm. that you did five years in university instead of four. And right. It really, it's true. Yeah. It has. It it's makes well, no difference. Yeah, it's all relative, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you can do three course three and three part time and get good grades, and not. Um, you know, and, and be able to afford it, that's, that's probably smarter than... So would you say striking the right balance between your finances and your ability to perform academically? Yeah. You know, and even like, that includes getting a job, like a part-time job as well to support yourself. Right? Yeah, part-time job. Um, and what is the point of going to school if you don't learn anything because you're just cramming right. to pay off the, you know, the loan or, or whatever. It doesn't make a lot of sense. and. And if you can avoid debt, the other thing to avoid debt is because it is a weight. Mm -hmm. It's it's um you want flexibility when you graduate so that you you can move to northern Alberta to take a job without having to take debt with you. Right. But if you're stuck with you know twenty thousand bucks, you're gonna take the first job you can get, and it might be a job you hate, and you might end up having to delay your dreams um, because of that debt. So um, doing what you can afford, getting through it. I think is, is smart. You know, there's so many deeper issues and concerns here. It's not just a simple thing of just don't get in debt. It seems like an obvious thing you'd say to students, but when you start talking about what's going to happen in the future and then how much you're actually learning now, and that will affect your capacity or your ability to get a job and perform. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of all intertwined. And I think this is a poor point of this kind of these interviews and this whole financial literacy campaign is to kind of make students aware. They might know it. They, they know they don't have to, you know, rack up a, a large debt. We all know that we should spend less and save more. But I don't think we can really appreciate the ramifications, especially in the moment. Mm -hmm. We don't think about our, like, our future selves, what they're going to have to put up with. Yeah. You know? um, so I think you raise all these points as the really important points yeah. that what, students have to be aware of. What kind of life do you want to live is, exactly. is, yeah. is the, the larger question. Yeah. And for some people, maybe school is not the answer. Right. You, know? um, uh, you certainly don't have to rush. You know? And, if, and at my point is, if you're going to go to school or university, it, it, it should be to learn. Right. And, and I don't know anybody who can really learn while doing six courses yeah. a semester. And having a part-time job. And having a part-time yeah. job and, yeah. and family responsibilities and maybe even four is, is, is ideal for some people. Yeah. You know, if you live close to the school, you can spread. I mean, I know some students don't do any summer courses, but the summer term is a great term to catch up so that you can have a lower course load during the fall and winter. And, right. And, you know, two in the summer, everything works out just fine. Mm -hmm. Is cramming and the panic, you know, it's that's something to avoid. It's, too. it's really, not fun. It affects their mental health, right? They yeah. all they get really anxious. Like you see them around midterms and end of year exams, they're all in a, in a, in a frenzy. Yeah. And that's because a lot of times it's just overload, right? Yeah. Having too many things on your plate. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're gonna switch gears a little bit. I'm gonna ask you, if you weren't a prof and you had all the money in the world, what would you be doing right now? Mm. I would maybe have a publishing company. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think so. <laughs> publish, publish. Uh, Write your own books and just get them out to the world. Or publish, publish. Other um, people's books. Yeah, detective novels. Oh. I think that would be fun. <laughs> have you written anything? Like, have you you? Uh... Oh, I write all kinds of stuff. There's nothing that people could look up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for spending no. the time to talk to us on the alley.